Welcome to the Blue Security Podcast, a weekly podcast for information security defenders, where we bring you discussions on best practices, tools, and implementation for enterprise security. Now, here are your hosts for today's show, Andy Ja and Adam Brewer. Welcome to the Blue Security Podcast. I'm Andy, your host. And I'm Adam, your co-host. And this week, our guest, John Joyner, joins us to talk about Azure Sentinel. John is a Microsoft MVP, and he and I have worked together professionally, and he is very, very knowledgeable about Azure and security in Azure and Azure Sentinel specifically, which we'll talk about today. John, if you can give an introduction about yourself and your experience for our listeners. For sure. Hi, everybody. Thanks for inviting me, Andy, uh, to this uh, event, and nice to work with you, Adam. Um, as Adam mentioned, uh, I'm sorry, as Andy mentioned, I am a 13-year Microsoft MVP, so it's just kind of been doing it a long time. Got my start with the, the MOM product, the System Center predecessor. And then, uh, so my, my MVP specialization has gone from MOM to SCOM to System Center to um, Cloud and Data Center Management. So now Cloud and Data Center Management is kind of a hybrid portfolio. And, uh, you know, today a lot when I'm talking about stuff, I'll be talking about it in, a, in that hybrid context. Um, as other background on myself, I'm a retired U.S. Navy Lieutenant Commander, and uh, I did uh, computer stuff for the Navy. Uh, got my start there with... Um, Land Manager, uh, it, with Land Manager 2.0, which allowed us to deploy Windows NT 3.5 as soon as it became available. <laughs> and uh, my career has never, it has never, I've literally not stopped doing that since that, since those days. And it's, Microsoft has been very good to me. Uh, since I retired from the Navy, I've been working uh, for a Microsoft partner. I live in Little Rock, Arkansas. And uh, our, our company name is, is Accountability. Uh, we run a, uh, we have offices in uh, Arizona, Arkansas, and in India. And we run a, a, a MSP service with a NOC, and we run an MSSP service with a SOC. So we have two complete 24 by 7 operations. And uh, we use a variety of tools for those. And so to, again, today in our talk, I'll be, I'll be referencing those platforms um, a lot. And it's where, it's where my lessons learned come from and stuff that I share with the community as an MVP. Um, and uh, th the reason that Andy and I know each other is because uh, his company was interested in Azure Sentinel. And uh, that's how we met, was at a presentation on that. And like him, for myself in the last year plus since that meeting, Andy, you know, Sentinel has been a big part of my life, big part of my career and my work. And it's a great product. It's a revolutionary product in so many ways. I can't wait to talk about it uh, in this session. Great. So we haven't really done a, a deep dive on SIMs in general. There have been a lot of tools that we've talked about in securing companies, but where in a security maturity model do you think a company needs to be before they even start to think about a SIM? Because that's not the first thing that you would deploy in a company, right? No, um, but I, I guess I knew we were going to talk about this, and so... You know, when we talk about what is a SIM, basically everybody has a SIM. You know, if you get, you know, if you have more than two security devices, or you receive more than two thing, if there's more than two security things in your universe, and who doesn't have more than that, then everyone is performing synthesis and fusion of security events across sources. And for for ev so everybody starts out doing that in their head. Everybody starts out doing that in their e in their inbox. And um, at a certain point, it becomes too much. And so when do you need, you, you need a SIM at that point. You need something that is officially where your security stuff surfaces and you deal with it. And so at the, at the big boy end, you know, when we talk about competitors to Azure Sentinel, um, we're talking about other mature SIM providers in the space and uh, three specifically that, that a lot of people are familiar with that are very popular would be uh, the Q Radar uh, from IBM, uh, Splunk, uh, and Splunk Cloud, and then Alien Vault. Right. So those are three well-known products. Those are the those are the the the, the enterprise big end, high end sims. 
that 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 uh, Sentinel absolutely competes with, but does not require the big buy-in, right? That, that that's another advantage of, of Sentinel we may talk about. But um, so so at that moment when you um, when it, when a when a customer or when a person you know when a, when somebody that's got more than two security things that they need to pay attention to at that moment um, they they need to make that decision and, and that that the sim can initially be something else it could be a ticketing system it can be a conventional uh, uh, or you know uh, IT workflow management you know that that where security items get handled in the context of all the other things it can it can be that and that's actually what it is for most people initially you know um, uh, but at, at a certain point, pretty early, you, you, you see the limitations of that, um, you know, because you're looking for different things. A monitoring system is looking for, um, you know, um, a server running out of memory. <laughs> you know, that's a very, very, very different computational task than looking for hostile signatures or, 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 or anomalous behavior on a network. And so very the the... the the overlap between what a general purpose monitoring tool can do and what a SIM can do is do is 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 small, frankly. It's enough to get started. And so um, I recommend that 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 all all businesses of larger than 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 small office home office, you know, uh, I'm not sure even Azure Sentinel is right for the small office home office, frankly. There's options, you know, fully managed firewalls from uh, Fortinet and such that are perfect for the tiny office, but you know once you are bigger than than tiny, look at Sentinel. Azure Sentinel can be your first, middle, and last sim. You can start it at any size because the buy-in cost is nim is very minimal. You know for a small business to run Sentinel is well under a hundred dollars a month. Probably under fifty, frankly. You know, for a small business to to plug their firewall through there, put their one server through there, um, have their ten workstations reporting through Defender through there, very, very, very inexpensive. Uh, just massive orders of magnitude less expensive than those other names that I mentioned. You know, and there's a hundred small market sims in between. You know, your between nothing and the big end. There's a hundred, right? But Sentinel spans, I think, legitimately spans that entire market. So um, Sentinel is that place to look at when you have two or more things to, to look at at the same time. And that that leads us into a discussion. I know, Andy, you and I have talked already. I'll, I'll stop for a second. But we talked about, when, in describing Azure Sentinel, the fact that it starts with connectors. You know, and that's how we bridge this question to, like, a fundamental Sentinel thing does is it, it is... A location where multiple pieces of data come in for you to look at. Yeah, when it comes to Azure, I think if you're new to Azure, there's a couple of things that need to be stood up within Azure before you really dive into the Sentinel portion of it, right? Because you need to have a space to store those logs as well. Give our listeners uh, an idea of what Azure Log Analytics is and how that specifically integrates with Sentinel? Mm -hmm. Good question. Um, when we talk about the building blocks of Sentinel, how to deploy Sentinel, what are the what are the, le the Lego pieces that when snapped together create Sentinel? Um, Azure Log Analytics is one of the three or four biggest Lego pieces. And um, it is, uh, I'm going to bring up another, another competitor technology, which is Splunk. Um, Splunk and Log Analytics per perform the identical function. You know, they are a repository of data that you're abstracted from that you can almost consider a data lake, and that and you interact with this repository using queries. Um, and that's what Log Analytics is. It is is a repository designed to receive data at hyperscale and uh, index that information in a s proprietary and super good way so that when I ask a question that out of this billion, you know, messages, how many have the word Jane Doe in it? And to have in, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a practical amount of time, it's not instantaneous, but it's not days. It's in a query of that size, it might be a, less than a minute, you know, to go through a billion records and look for an exact text string. And that is, um, 
something that was just wasn't in our computing universe as as system pro IT pros, you know, uh, until cloud computing and and the and analytic analytic log processing came together. Um, so uh, when we when we when we're looking at a bridge between historical monitoring and the, this new paradigm and and. I don't want, you know, Sentinel and Log, Azure Log Analytics can't claim the market on it, and probably Splunk can't either. You know, if we go back to the origins of, 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 of Unix and Linux, probably the concept of a streaming log repository is fundamental, you know, in our industry. Uh, but be, I, maybe because of lack of understanding or a lack of access to the, to the resources or whatever, um, general IT has, has not been able to use that, that uh, you know, during our formative years, and that's why we came up with products like HP OpenView, IBM Tivoli, okay, these were the pioneers of our uh, modern network, or, or of our network monitoring industry, and they wrote fat tools, fat tools with fat agents and fat gateways uh, to do all of that work. And and to this day, uh, you know, um, SolarWinds, Orion, works that way. SCOM works that way. It's a database with, with fairly fat workers that look at stuff and then write a value to the database. And then when you want to know what's going on, then you talk to an API or something, you know, and you go look in the database and, and, you know, you're looking at a, at a static version of what something was in a database. And that's how monitoring has worked. And, um, log analytics is, is a new way to do this. And this is like, you know, we don't need a fat watcher looking at our things. If we adequately, get logging on everything that the thing can do and we have infinite storage and infinite processing capability to slice and dice that data we have even better than the fat agent because we can almost replay the state of that machine in time across any of the dimensions of the logs that we're collecting and we monitor from there we monitor in this standoff we monitor the copy of the data not the thing itself. That lets us use a very lightweight agent, uh, distribute our, our uh, monitoring in, in a much more efficient way. And uh, log analytics is a winner. Log analytics, I predict, uh, you know, as Azure monitor matures in the next couple of years, uh, because Microsoft, frankly, has not spent a lot of resources on beefing up the generic system monitoring capabilities of their log analytics tool. You know, they, 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 they concentrated first on Sentinel and maybe it was a good idea, right? Because Sentinel is fantastic. It blows everything out of the water, right? And people are learning the value of log analytics through adopting Sentinel. You know, because it's, it's I've, <laughs> once people start to use it, I've never, I never had anybody not fall in love with it, frankly, so. Did that answer your, answer the question? What is log analytics? Yeah, absolutely. That was a great answer. Thanks. So another Lego piece I think that fits in is Azure Security Center, right? If you mm -hmm. have infrastructure, I think this really only applies if you have infrastructure in Azure. A security center can be an important component, right? Well, through Azure Arc. That is now a different story. That is actually not the story anymore, Andy. There's a better story. Um, On-prem and in Azure servers, Windows and Linux, all four varieties, um, fully can benefit from Azure Security Center, from Azure Sentinel coverage on servers. Azure Sentinel Server, you know, or Azure Sentinel for servers. Um, all servers worldwide can participate in that solution now. Um, and so, like, how, how does it play in? Okay, it, um, I, again, I knew we were to talk about this, and so I came up with the word for Azure, for Azure Security Center. Um, to, 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 what is it? It's an ombudsman, okay? Azure Security Center does a lot of things. It does a number of things. It's hard to describe what it does. It's been hard for Microsoft to sell it um, because it's doing... It, it's, that's why I call it an ombudsman. I think actually by definition, you know, that's what ombudsman, ombudsman is, you know, doing a bunch of stuff on behalf of something else. And so Azure Security Center is, um, Im imagine what, imagine if you had a lobbyist, you know, that was working on your behalf. And, you know, 
Azure Security Center is that lobbyist. It's your it's your high ground agent with the big picture, making sure strategically you haven't forgotten anything. You know that um, you have are monitoring all of your stuff. That you have policies to watch the important stuff are out there. You know, and that you have either everything pretty okay or you've got a f a flaming dumpster. You know, your job's on the line. Azure Security Center will tell you that. Um, and so um, Azure Security Center is a super important part of Azure Sentinel. Now, not every customer, not every one of our managed Sentinel customers uses Azure Security Center because there's an extra cost, $15 a month per server in Azure or on-prem. And so, like, is it worth it? You know, for me, yes, no-brainer. You know, but for some, some companies, you know, We'll just, that's what part of being a service provider is providing service. And so I have companies that are spending a ton of, on Sentinel and getting, and they're very happy with the firewall coverage, you know, the basic agent coverage. And when, and if this, you know, if you're a large customer and you have over a thousand servers and you already have a huge IT investment and efficient team and, you know, the, you know, Azure Security Center at $15 a server for a thousand servers, that's $15,000 a month. And that's, that's the, you know, salary and benefits of, of a decent security analyst in a lot of markets. And so it's not a trivial, security center is not a trivial thing for the larger enterprise. It's not a fit for everybody. But for your smaller operations and for uh, operations that don't have a strategic staff and a CISO and all of that other stuff, Azure Security Center is your, is your go-to, you know? It's going to show it's going to show inspectors evidence of attempt to achieve compliance. You know, it's going to provide evidence that, you know, in the, in the last year, we as a company improved our security in the following ways. You know, we implemented MFA. You know, we implemented Defender scanning. You know, these are all policies that we can show through snapshots of the security score that we improved our company's security materially. And I think it's priceless, frankly. Um, you know, uh, I go into customers and when, when they take a look at how Sentinel can help them achieve compliance, like on uh, for HIPAA high trust, your medical industry, um, and your, your PCI DSS uh, for your banking facilities, you know, when they see with their own eyes how Azure Security Center demystifies the road to compliance, huge light bulbs go on. Like, you know, why have I been paying so much to get so little with this, with other compliance solutions? You know, why has everybody been telling me this is so hard? This is so hard. This is not so hard. <laughs> uh, so Azure, Azure Security Center, um, among uh, its many ombudsman duties, because it does, it does do like housekeeping, security housekeeping tasks throughout your Azure subscription. Again, like that agent, like that butler, or you know that, that you 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 count on. It principally is handling that. It's it's providing that oversight against a list of compliance settings to make sure that you haven't made a huge blunder. Um, you know, for example, leaving a uh, machine open to the internet on S, on re, on a remote protocol. That's a lose your job thing over these days. And your <laughs> security center yeah. will find that and let you know. Right. Awesome. So, John, to kind of summarize everything you've talked about to this point, we're we're kind of contrasting and comparing how Azure Log Analytics and Azure Security Center and Azure Sentinel kind of all fit together. What is each component responsible for? And I'm just checking my knowledge and, and hopefully for our listeners as well. Azure Log Analytics is more of kind of the underlying log storage mechanism that Sentinel is kind of built on top of. And Sentinel is going to add that intelligence and, and some additional capabilities we'll cover as we go through the conversation today. Azure Security Center is more complementary in the fact that it's going to do, amongst many other things, the example you gave was configuration advice, essentially, amongst other things like, hey, you have this RDP port open to the public internet on this VM, you might want to take a look at that. And, and so 
we can understand as we we think conceptually about what a sim does, a sim might not tell us that RDP is open to the public internet until somebody is knocking on the door there. Um, but Security Center can help us be kind of more proactive in, in correcting that. And log analytics is going to be that place where we can just go troll through logs and search for specific strings or use that KQL, mm. custo query language to go look for different things. Is is that, did I kind of hit the and mark? Am I've, I got, close? I've got goosebumps. That's how on the mark you were with your Azure Security Center description, okay? <laughs> keep it or keep it up. That's awesome. So you mentioned a bunch of different SIM competitors in the market. And specifically, I think we want to just focus on Azure Sentinel, but how does Azure Sentinel kind of differ from some of those traditional SIMs like Splunk, like QRadar, Alien Vault? Mm -hmm. um, well, they, I guess the, the two, the two first person answers I can give to that re, re, revolve around the fact that, that Sentinel is, isn't cloud native, you know, um, Sentinel as an attractive security platform for security professionals. I can tell you this again. This is not. This is first person. Um, uh, Andy, you know that you, you, you used to work at Microsoft, right? Uh, you and actually, Adam, you work at Microsoft now. There's the there's the saying, do, yes. you, know, you know, there's the saying of like, you know, open the kimono, you know, which is to describe, you know, um, uh, your firsthand experience, uh, you know, in in first person terms. So, um, at my own company. Um, we had a mature sock that was using another one of those other three products, you know, and so we have, and, and, and we have some very hot shot security professionals that take pride in their work, uh, that were very, you know, adept at using the other product. And, um, since they have become proficient at Azure Sentinel, um, which wasn't, it wasn't maybe, I don't know how easy it was to lead them to the water, but once they found the water, boy, did they start drinking. And um, they did, within days of these guys actually starting to use Sentinel and seeing what it's capable of, it was no going back to the third party product. And they, you know, so these are like my colleagues, you know, they, they work in another, in another office, you know, I actually don't even hardly see them. So just the power of the tool sold these security guys, you know, and um, it, they wouldn't do that just to because they like me. <laughs> They've hardly ever met me, right? So it, that's a first person data point that that as a product, Sentinel is excellent. Uh, what I know makes it different, I, I, I guess anecdotally, what makes it different is it's better than the other guys, it's a security tool. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, first person data point is that, um, uh, or, or rather observation, is that um, Sentinel was designed in the cloud with cloud components from the beginning and with nothing else. And that is, there isn't, you know, none of the other guys are like that. Um, one, at least one of those guys, um, Splunk has a cloud option called Splunk Cloud. And, um, uh, you know, Azure Sentinel perhaps resembles that, you know, um, I, certainly QRadar resembles Azure Sentinel in the aspect that QRadar gets it gets its intelligence, you know, from us from scheduled queries, you know, and that's 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 the focus of their product. Um, uh, I know also from uh, pers from firsthand knowledge that that Alien Vault has none of that. Alien Vault ha does not have a query based function. It is essentially a proprietary function. You know, and uh, I hear from analysts that an advantage of Sentinel, a big advantage of Sentinel over Alien Vault is that Alien Vault, you know, the detections you're kind, you are at the mercy of the of, of the of the attentiveness and professionalism of the Alien Vault guys. You know, the the, the you, if you you can't you can't create custom extensions essentially to the uh, to what's being looked for, at least not easily, and so. Uh, for for the for those guys, uh, Azure Sentinel because it's completely extensible and completely exposed. It's the opposite of the black box that Alien Vault is. Um, so in, in terms of how is how is Sentinel different from Alien Vault? It's it's radically different. It's a completely different beast, right? Um, Azure Sentinel is very similar to uh, 
QRadar in that it uses queries. And Azure Sentinel is very similar to uh, Splunk Cloud in that it combines you know, security and the cloud aspect. Um, so there's similarities and differences, but but even you know where 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 those the two companies that have cloud offerings, and I believe there is of course a a cloud version of of uh, Alien Vault, you know. But the, again, those are just cloud versions. All three of those products, Splunk, Alien Vault, Curator, they all started on prem with traditional server client server based technology, and over time they have migrated or added or duplicated their services to certain aspects of cloudiness. Um, and, and Azure Sentinel is native cloudy. Every single piece, there is no legacy underpinning. There is no previous server-based version. So Sentinel ha did not have to maintain compatibility with anything, you know? And so the, uh, you know, a lot of Sentinel is built on ARM templates. ARM templates, ARM meaning Azure Resource Manager. Azure Resource Manager is kind of, I call it, I call it the master controller of Azure. You know, it's Azure's OS. It's the, it's what, it's, it's how you, you know, when you're, when you're using Azure PowerShell or where you're typing in the Azure portal, you're talking to Resource Manager. And when you deploy a VM, you're, a Resource Manager is doing the deployment. So Sentinel was written literally in the language of the most scalable, hyper-scalable, hyper-proven management platform the planet has ever seen. Um, the, the, you know, and so out of the gate, Azure Sentinel um, has all the cloud advantages that anything from the cloud could ever have. And so all the, the economies of scale that have been baking in our industry for 15, 20 years that started, you know, it started with virtualization and then the beginnings of cloud computing and then infrastructure and then migration, you know, um, all of that, all of those learnings went in at the incept of the Sentinel product. And so it's inexpensive, it's fast, it's fun and it's, it's easy and even fun to use sometimes. It's relevant. There's, it doesn't have trappings of when it taught, you know, had on-prem infrastructure components. So it's just, it's way different in so many ways. And, um, it lets in in many ways. I think it let the it let the uh, the people behind Sentinel, the product team, focus on delivering a security product because they already had a platform. They already had a platform, Azure and ARM, and they and so you know, like what is what is Microsoft's you know thing? Let us help you be your best. Azure, you know, the Azure Cloud helped the security industry develop their best tool ever. As you said. So a couple other, um, just a couple notes to add on to what you just said, John. Number one, you, you really make the point, and, and we see this a lot, that there are tools that are essentially, when they say, we have a cloud version, they're just running the on-prem instance for you. That's all they're really doing. It's not really cloud native. It's not built for the cloud. It's just you're essentially paying for a managed instance, which is still nice and can still be beneficial, but it's not the same thing as, as a hyperscale cloud native solution that's built on microservices and, and all of those kind of cloudy things, Is to your point. One other differentiator you didn't mention that I wanted to briefly call out as well is understanding that not everyone uses Microsoft just their productivity provider, but many organizations do. And so if you use Microsoft 365, some, and I will call out very clearly, some of those logs can be ingested into Sentinel at no cost for, um, I believe it's 90 days. But that, if that's your primary productivity platform, you've got a ton of logs coming out of there to get any of them to be stored for any length of time at no cost is something nobody else is really offering. And so that's a nice little benefit too. Now, if you're not on Microsoft for your productivity platform, that is a diminished benefit, but uh, if you're doing business with Microsoft, you certainly understand the the value of the platform and and how the different things kind of tie in together. And and there's just another example there. Absolutely. Anecdotally, I, I, I was gonna I was gonna say for me, testing Azure Sentinel was very cost effective, and I think for a lot of security shops out there, when it comes to talking about a sim. 
all of these other companies come in and demo and then they ask you how much you're going to use for logs and a lot of times you have no idea how much you're going to ingest for logs into a, a sim and you they go through some sort of calculation based on how many servers you have and what services you are, you're using and they spit out this number like two three hundred gigs a day or something like ridiculous like that and then they tell you it's going to cost three to you know six hundred thousand dollars a year and then you're like okay well <laughs> guess we're not getting a sim because that's an astronomical number for a lot of companies to spend on one security tool and so one of the things that for azure Sentinel is an absolute benefit is you can get immediate results from a tool that will add to your security monitoring right away at very low cost like for us we got to try out um azure sentinel with a program that microsoft used um i can't remember the the name of the funds but microsoft essentially essentially will fund a cloud service provider to help you try it and everything and so microsoft paid john's company to help onboard sentinel with our company and we got to demo it and if we didn't like it we can turn it off and like Adam said, the a lot of the logs, if you're using Microsoft as your productivity suite, will be ingested for free. And even that, Microsoft gave us a pot of money to use during the POC for to pay for logs if we had overages based on that. So, um, it you know the the number that we're paying for Sentinel versus uh, what other companies are is I think. 10 to 20 times less than than what you'd be paying for like Splunk. So, I mean, it's cost-wise, it was a no-brainer for my boss to say, okay, a couple thousand dollars a month, let's give it a shot for, you know, a while and, and see. And you get added benefit right away because of if you're using Microsoft as your main productivity. So just wanted to add that to the to the mix. And you uh, started talking about what gets ingested into Sentinel, Adam, with the signals from Office and uh, or Microsoft um, productivity suites. But there's other ways to get data into Sentinel. So I guess for our listeners, John, how are logs specifically ingested into Sentinel? Like where do you start for that? That's, uh, you know, segue right from what we were just talking about, um, and, uh, which was that some of the connectors are, are essentially free, you know, uh, you know, and uh, the most basic example is the Azure activity log. You know, if you have an Azure subscription, you have an Azure activity log. And the Azure activity log is 100% free for, for Sentinel to, to ingest. And so like, I, you know, I asked myself, why doesn't every single Azure user have an instance of Azure Sentinel so they can at least have security oversight for free on everything that happens in their Azure subscription? Because that's a true statement, you know. And uh, there's a there's the, there so so ha data gets in uh, through built-in connectors, of which some are free, um, like Azure Activity. Other Built-in connectors require licensing, and back to Adam's point, um, how we, we sort of marry the uh, the security services and the need to synthesize them in the in the in the in the, in the form of a sim because um, many large Microsoft customers that have an investment in Microsoft products they are uh, they've purchased, for example, the enterprise E3 or the enterprise E5 options for their for their office which include use of some of these microsoft tools you know particularly the e5 which is a fantastic value you know again every i think every company that doesn't have e5 they better have something that does everything e5 does or their or, it's, or their days are numbered you know so if you've got the e5 that means you're getting you know a defender for endpoint detection on your mobile devices you know you're getting a uh, defender for azure identity you know watching your your logins on your domain controllers and on your into your azure subscription you know you're you're getting all of these rich data streams and um azure sentinel is the place to surface them you know it, because not only does azure sentinel ha have a, a built-in way 
uh, to merge that data, you know, log analytics uh, and uh, the fact that uh, Azure Sentinel alerts can look across all the different data sources. Um, but um, your uh, your uh, you have you have other other Microsoft services. You know, another example is we talked about set, um, Azure Security Center, Azure Sentinel. You know, invaluable for servers. Like you say, a no brainer. That's what's going to tell you that you that um, someone has logged on to the web server of your web ser of your server from a hostile site. You know, Azure Security Center is going to tell you that. You know, and so, um, and it's going to, it will tell you for, it'll, it, you know, if you're paying the $15 a month, it's going to pop up in the Azure Security Center console in that place where I told you, you know, your job's at risk, right? But, but if you have Azure Sentinel and you've connected at, uh, Azure Security Center for Sentinel, that, uh, that, that alert about the secure, about the security incident on the server is going to show up in the Sentinel console. And so, um, we, you know, getting getting the defender for endpoint, the defender for identity, the defender for server, um, the, the Azure activity, those are all Microsoft source logs that Azure Sentinel just absolutely is a no brainer. There's no comparison for any other product and how it's going to synthesize and bring those together. And, you know, in the context of this of this radio podcast, we don't have time to actually get into it. But Sentinel actually is is market leading, uh, industry leading in its looking across those tables. You're looking for you know the person logged into their O365 account apparently from this city, but then they logged into their uh, Windows 10 machine on the domain apparently in this other city. They can't both be the same person. This is an anomaly. I'm going to alert on this. You know that's that's the the, the fusion between the the alerts, which is where Sentinel really comes in. So. We've got we've got these built-in logs, and then we have our devices. This is where Azure Sentinel competes against uh, Splunk Cloud, you know, and Q Radar in the traditional uh, de device firewall management market, you know, and um, completely separate from this this fabulous integration with Security Center and the other Microsoft security tools is the ability to get raw log data from our Windows machines, our Linux machines, our devices, our firewalls. You know our our uh, IDS uh, probes, any any other device that can talk syslog protocol. You know, or if it's a Windows or Linux machine, we put an a, a Linux a, a Windows agent on it, and we collect all the security log information. We collect all the file access information. We collect all the change daemon service starting registry in changes. We we log all of it. You know, and and so Azure Sentinel is is receiving streaming data from your firewalls. It's receiving uploaded log data from your Windows and Linux machines. It's receiving pushed data from all the Windows services, Defender, ex Defender services. So I, you know, there's there I've just put on the table three different ways, you know, p fat pipelines of data coming into Azure Sentinel. So most of our managed Sentinel customers have at least at least twelve to fifteen connectors. Some have almost twenty connectors. You know, different streams of security data and uh you know uh, we didn't mention we you, you mentioned you know adam you mentioned customers that have a lot of microsoft stuff going on but ex honestly sentinel ex is not limited to outstanding performance with other products you know an example is okta okta is an sso provider that competes with azure ad and uh okta is supported in azure sentinel as a first class citizen you know, if your company is using Okta instead of Azure AD as your primary SSO engine, it, it, you know, this is a, a kind of a reason why I, did, I don't bring up the fact that, that the Sentinel is so good with the Microsoft tools because it's good with everybody. It is fully inclusive. My, it, it, the, the product is developed so fast uh, and has so much community participation. So these connectors, there's over 200 now. Available, it built. There's over almost a hundred built into the product. There's another hundred available at GitHub, you know. And so the uh, the way to there's, there's just, I don't think there's any other product uh, that 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 comes close to, to allowing you to connect so many diverse uh, streams of data in for se security analysis by a single engine, especially augmented with machine learning. <laughs> Again, another thing we don't have time to talk to talk too much about maybe in this in this in this particular podcast. Yeah, so 
all those Microsoft services, I just want to let our listeners know just how easy it is to turn on those logs because since they're all integrated with Microsoft and Sentinel can see them, they're literally a toggle within Sentinel. Like you just go to the product, you toggle it on, and it integrates. Just like if you were to integrate, say, Azure AD logs with MCAS or um, Defender for Identity with MCAS, it's they're all just toggles, and you just integrate them. If you go into the settings for a lot of these security tools, they have integration to the other pieces of Microsoft Security, and that's the same way with Sentinel. And so the onboarding of those services, day one, you can onboard probably at least 10 of those connectors that are Microsoft just by just hitting the toggle on. And then you look at other third-party things that you can integrate with, like Okta you mentioned. That's just an API. So you go, go to Okta's admin portal, spin up an API, connect it over to Azure Sentinel, and it, it takes five minutes and then you start getting all that data um, so a lot of these can be easy some of them do require say like a syslog forwarder to get those syslogs or ceph logs into uh, azure sentinel and we've done that with like other products like our firewalls and um, zscaler required a, a syslog forwarder and it's all supported there's a connector within um, azure sentinel but it walks you through all the different steps, you do have to have some sort of log forwarder that you can either spin up in Azure or uh, other IAS uh, platform like AWS, or you can put it on-prem and uh, point your your logs to that forwarder. There's a an agent that you install in the forwarder, and it forwards it up to um, Azure Sentinel. If I'm anyone, wondering. if any listeners familiar with it, that that the uh, Splunk Splunk has a a, a a virtual device called the Splunk Heavy Forwarder, which is identical. You know, they, they sell it or they they market it as a, you know, a virtual network appliance that you can just drop in, and that's really what what the, these are as well. These are generic Linux Linux VMs with the with the log analytics connector on there. Have and you ever actually, seen uh, any? I'm sorry. I was just going to say I have a little success story, really quick, to share that that um, we've been uh, throwing uh, syslog collector farms up in Azure for larger customers, and we have a, we have some customers with over a hundred firewalls um, reporting into uh, multi-node syslog collector arrays um, that we're running in Azure, uh, and we're using TLS. We you know it's it's not something that's been done that's been you know TLS for syslog is not super common. But it's supported, and so we've developed. You know, we've got we've got um, Palo Altos, we've got Cisco, and we've got uh, Fortigates, and Meraki's, you know, reporting by uh, TLS into Sentinel uh, to Syslog farms over the internet. And so we solve a problem or an issue, you know, like how do I connect my all my branch office firewalls? How how do I securely get their data? To the place it can be analyzed without impacting my other data circuits, you know, and and um, there's it works, right? It's 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 a published solution, and uh, it's 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 uh, it's enabled us to help customers snap into Azure really fast, or rather, snap into Azure Sentinel really fast, because even customers all over the world, you know, with with offices in anywhere in the world, um, you. You can connect them to your Azure Sentinel syslog forwarder, you know, in a, in the Azure region, you know, where their where their devices are, and all you know. So you just you just drop one or more syslog collectors in the Azure region uh, where the, the most firewalls are, and then put in, put agents on those machines back to the log analytics workspace the Sentinel is watching. And in in that manner, um, uh, we have we've been able to scale the Azure Sentinel hardware device firewall collection solution and it's proven you know it's it's it works it's good i'm curious if you have any customers because you mentioned different regions if there are customers who have concerns of say gdpr and need to keep data for that region separate how easy is it to have multiple sentinel instances or is that something that you've seen before to keep the data separate um 
to be, you know, full kimono, we don't have any customers doing that for that reason. But we as a service provider through Azure Lighthouse are doing that exact thing, right? So you could imagine us as a, as a billion dollar company, you know, with dozens of, of, of large offices around the world. And we've put, we put a Sentinel instance in each one because that was the right thing to do for, G, for, you know, for, for data separation, for example. And as we are a service provider now with that high ground watching many subscriptions at the same time, so that same, you know, I guess the answer is it's not a limitation of the product. In fact, there's a feature of the Azure architecture that specifically supports completely distributed and segregated, you know, monitoring, yet the analysis can happen in the single pane of glass, you know, where the, of, of the service provider or of the large or, or of the enterprise that's, that's got the multiple distributed locations. Good I think question. That's another, another differentiator right there is that ties in so beautifully with cloud architecture and what cloud architecture is really good at, where it's literally a drop down of, I want to build my log analytics workspace in this region done. And it's super easy to do. And I pay for just what I need in each region. So I'm not like double paying because we had to stand up a whole other instance of product X exactly. for these five regions. It, there isn't that startup cost, right? It's just a usage consumption based costing model. So I, I, I'm, I'm not any worse for where I'd be paying the same amount if it's all in one region as it would be if it's distributed across five regions. Obviously, there is some administrative overhead, but that's not really something you pay necessarily to Microsoft for. That's your own internal cost. So cloud yeah, wins. Is, is... Cloud wins. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think when we started off, John, we forwarded all the domain controllers in our environment and a few of our critical servers. And that was the bulk of our log consumption. All of the other logs were, um, or some firewalls too, and that, that combined was, was the majority of our log consumption, whereas the Microsoft services, I, I don't remember seeing a, anything on the Microsoft services side that actually made a blip on the on the payment side and we were ingesting roughly when we first started about 15 gigs a month. Um, and that was about a hundred dollars. So a hundred dollars a month, $1,200 a year was what we initially uh, budgeted for, um, for all of our Microsoft services, our domain controllers and a few critical servers and firewalls. And so, uh, I, I just think the, the amount of, of coverage that you're going to get for the cost is there's really nothing on the market and it was so quick to stand up right because there's no on-prem infrastructure so. sean you kind of teased this a little bit earlier where you talked potentially about what's referred to in the industry as ueba or um, user and entity behavioral analytics and i think you teased a couple of examples where we might have some logs coming in showing some anomalous behavior but can you give our listeners a couple of an examples of, of where Sentinel can do stuff like that in action or maybe something you've seen. Um, yeah, you mentioned one of the newer features of, of, of Azure Sentinel, which is the user and event behavior analysis feature. And uh, this is a, you know, the, the concept of UEBA as an in, in within our industry is relatively new. I don't know, you know, two, three, five years at the most is when people started using this term. And um, it, it's almost like we needed to have mature, powerful cloud platforms before we could even talk about doing that kind of analysis. You know, because you have to mm -hmm. have um, uh, you have to have a lot of data, and you have to have a lot of computing power, and you have to uh, have some some experience with with combing through data. You know, and so we needed a while just to to, to come industry to a plateau where we could start to do this. And Azure Sentinel is an early market leader with it with it with a two market usable valuable product based on on ueba um and uh as as andy knows it uh remember andy i think i we had a ch we had a, a team's chat when, when the feature was introduced because because we felt that in your environment specifically it would provide a lot of help for you and i think it did i think you've used the feature a lot um so uh UEBA in the Microsoft context means that that they're gonna they're, they're they, they, first of all we create a table in the log analytics repository 
uh, you know, now now we're peeling back the onion a little bit. That data lake that you that you are extracted from, you never have to worry about how big it is or anything, you know. Uh, but you you do as you di- as you dive into the product, you become aware that that database is organized in tables, and the more services you have, the more tables you have. And Microsoft uh, saw that th- that they could benefit from a place to perform this fusion work of users, identities, and behavior. You know, if it, they, they needed, they weren't able to do that work exclusively with on the fly queries, you know, which is how you can, you can do 97% of anything you ever need to do, you know, in, 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 in monitoring and management with just queries, you know, uh, because all the data is there, all the data is there, you know, and, and part of the secret to this is that we don't make duplicates of the data. You know, we, we have just the data, you know, so, uh, you know, part of the, part of the strength. Yes. So I was, I went down the rabbit hole of the table. Okay, mm-hmm. so um, we we uh, we have the table that it, where Microsoft is storing cues about where users have logged on from, right, and what they've done when they've logged on, and so um, UEBA is a comparison of what the users are doing now based on what we have observed them to be doing. Right, and so the 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 behavior analysis table uh, that is created in in your log analytics workspace stores that data, and then um, we can do two things with that data. We with the fact that we ha- are storing that data. Number one is we can detect anomalous behavior, and we can alert on it. Right, um, that because we can track that this you know this user has never logged on to this kind of device in this country you know or this user you know has never downloaded this kind of document you know from sharepoint to their uh, onedrive before right so it's like users and behavior and noticing the differences so number one we can report on the anomalies we can alert on them and number two is we have uh, we have added the capability to pivot around in the data in that uh, user uh, user behavior table, right? So uh, the the, uh, the implementation in Sentinel is that um, you'll you'll have a user or an entity that you're that you're worried about that you want to do more investigation. You've received you know an alert of something anomalous. So Azure Sentinel has an area in the console specifically designed for this for user behavior analysis, and you you paste. And this is very simple. The, the, the entrance to the UI is extremely simple. You just paste in a server name, you paste in an IP, you paste in a user, you know, a user or an entity. And once you paste that in, then the console opens up to a very rich console that shows everything Sentinel knows about that ent- entity and all the interactions that it's had with all of the other entities in the table and every security event or warning or alert that all any of those, you know, uh, second order entities have had. So um, it's it's a it is it is a, a next level sim feature, you know, that is very useful and is another sales point, you know, or, or, you know how Sentinel beats the competition to market with a, a sophisticated, usable UEBA feature. That, and by the way, it's there's no extra charge for it, you know. By the way, you didn't even have to do anything. You just, it just was gifted, you know, to the Sentinel community, uh, and, and the the feature set of Azure Sentinel just keeps getting more rich. Uh, and you know, I can see other software vendors maybe adding such a feature, such a valuable feature as an add-on, you know, maybe you know with some complexity or, or, or cost, but not 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 in the Sentinel model. I think in our last topic here, I want to kind of give our listeners, once they get a sim started up, I think a lot of people get overwhelmed because there's the overwhelming cost of it first, but then let's say you invest in it and then you start onboarding all of these connectors, you're going to get a lot of alerts and maybe you're going to find something that um, is misconfigured or something you didn't know about. And I know that Early on, John, you were getting some, you know, as part of the POC, you were getting our alerts in your inbox and you would ping me at, you know, different times and say, hey, Andy, you have 
this alert that's just, you know, 100 alerts uh, an hour and it's blowing up my inbox. And even, you know, as we started onboarding these connectors, you get overwhelmed because you get hundreds of alerts. And so it becomes uh, an exercise in futility to try to, like, sort through all of this and, and um, figure out. And so, you know, how do you tune that down? And then, you know, what does um, the feature for Azure Sentinel with uh, workbooks play into this versus the analytics alerts? Um, well, do you, I think you, add, you you threw me for a loop there with the, uh, the workbooks at the end, Andy. You know, when we were talking about reducing a noise and alert fatigue, you know, that's one thing. Um, and Azure Sentinel has, has all kinds of ways to address that. You know, um, the, uh, in, in, in some of the integrations I know that we helped you with, Andy, uh, we used uh, logic apps for post-processing of Azure Sentinel alerts uh, to, to uh, compare, you know, for example, um, we develop a safe IP list. You know, we know what are the IP addresses of the, uh, you know, your 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 network admins, their home, their homes, and, and 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 small branch offices. And so, you know, the 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 otherwise anomalous or possibly risky behaviors that Sentinel is maybe alerting on, you know, quickly we discover oh they're coming from the same five IPs. Oh well, those two of those IPs are the are the homes of the two net admins, and the third one is our branch office in in New York, whatever you know. And so you create a a, a safe list, you know, and then you you pipe the uh, output of Sentinel alerts that that are based on a on an unknown or anomalous IP through the Logic App, and the Logic App looks uh, you know up against this list, this short list of of that you've you've discovered are safe recurring hits of that particular kind of alert and in that case you don't alert you close it the, the the automation comments on the alert you know automation is closing this alert because the address was found in the trusted sites table you know alert closed and uh so that's that is uh, a feature of sentinel that our uh, SOC staff they really impressed me because i thought you know as an it system pro logic apps were kind of an exotic feature of Azure. They were not a feature of Azure that I had personally as an IT pro spent much time with, you know, and uh, I started diving into them because they're Sentinel's primary workflow engine. And then to my, to my happy surprise, my colleagues uh, in our SOC really took to the logic apps as well, right? And so writing, you know, reducing that alerts, the, the false alerts, the noise, Azure Sentinel has a great mechanism to do that. You know, um, and, and that's that's not the only way. You know, there's there's all kinds of ways in terms of reducing the pop. You know, uh, re exemptions and waivers to things that 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 might be alert. You know, you can suppress the alert from happening in the first place, rather than suppressing the notification after. You know, so there's a lot of approaches. Um, we talked about how the Microsoft, how Azure Sentinel is a repository for a lot of the other Microsoft tools like Defender and 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 MCAS. You know, and those products themselves, they have places that you can go in and say, well, these are the safe cities or countries where my people work, you know, and these are the these are the ones that we have no business in, you know, and that information then shapes the, you know, reduces the false alerts, uh, you know, that would be coming from from the uh, false, you know, from the geographic based anomaly detections. So we have just all kinds of things in our toolkit to uh, make the, 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 the alert stream less noisy. Um, mm -hmm. Now you mentioned workbooks. Um, again, again, I'm going to point credit to my, my SOC team. They took off, it, workbook use exploded with them because they found it's the workbooks are the perfect way to uh, track and, and communicate with the customer on security issues because, you know, uh, workbooks are very easy to make. An Azure workbook, a Sentinel workbook, is is a basically a, a query, like a you know a KQL query that we've mentioned, which under certain certain circumstances might generate an alert, but in other circumstances they can return data, and that data can go into a chart or in a graph, and we can put multiple charts and graphs into one view, and that's a workbook, and so. Um, you know, each customer is different. Each customer has different uh, things they're interested in. 
that that when you have when you have a a, a, a session with the customer, you know, you, you need to have something to, to look at, to talk to together, and that's meaningful, you know. And uh, Azure Workbooks, they're they're like that, they're that customizable dashboard that that's that that really works. And uh, you know, when we're ta- when we're talking about synth synthesizing a large amount of data into a small amount of data. Here's an example is a security data analysis, security event analysis, which in a large customer can be in the tens of millions of, of events, you know, in a day. And so how, you know, how do you spot anomalies? Or do you even need to worry about stuff? And so you craft workbooks that, that um, exclude the 99.9% of that 10 million things that you account you they're accounted for we know what those are that's not you know and so lo and behold you know in your massive 10 million environment 10 million event environment there's only yesterday there were only 1100 events that we really need to look at and i made this you know and i made this workbook and it's divided those 1100 events into these these 10 categories let's look at each one you know mm-hmm. and uh it, the, the, so workbooks provide a, a way to humanize and scale down this vast amount of data into meaningful statistics that you can look at week over week or month over month ago. I see what's happening. I recognize that. That's our normal behavior. That's a trend. No, that's something new, right? Workbooks are perfect for that. Yeah, like one of example I can give from an anecdotal side is we pipe our firewall logs into Azure Sentinel and we have a security tool on the firewall that will block certain malicious IPs or malicious uh, traffic. And that is just within the firewall. It doesn't have anything else to do with any of our Microsoft services, right? But every time it detects one of these events, it will just go ahead and block it. That's the action that it takes. And so if it's already blocked, then I don't necessarily need to alert on it. And what we were doing previously was alerting on each one and I'd look at it and I'd see the action was blocked and there's really no action there. But what we did was we created a workbook that piped all that data into a workbook so that over time I could see all the different IP addresses and how many events were happening, you know, throughout the week. And then I can do my investigation, um, you know, on a weekly basis because all the actions were blocked. And so then taking all that massive data and putting it into workbook and breaking it down into tables saying, okay, I got so many alerts from this IP. What is it, right? I got so many alerts from this IP. Let me go and investigate that. And so that is much more valuable than getting an alert, you know, 10 times a day on a malicious IP getting blocked, right? So I think we're at the the end of our discussion here. Adam, is there anything else that you wanted to add on? Just thanks, John, so much for coming on the show and, and sharing your wealth of knowledge with us. I know for me personally, I, I in, in my role at Microsoft, I will have more responsibility for Azure Sentinel and I was attentively listening and learning today. So I appreciate it and uh, really glad you came on today. Thanks so much. Great to have Microsoft yeah, on the team. Uh, thank you, Adam. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, John, for coming on. And I think um, we'd love to have you back and maybe do a deeper dive into just Azure security in general. Uh, I think you know this was a discussion on Sentinel, but you have so much knowledge to you know give on on Azure in general. So um, thank you very much for being here. If uh, our listeners have additional questions or they want to reach out, can you provide some uh, avenues that they can uh, contact you? Um, gosh, how about uh, my Twitter, John underscore Joiner? You know, uh, send me send me a DM. That's easy. All right, Love perfect. It. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks for listening, everyone. That's the end of our show for this week. As always, our contact information will be in the show notes. If you have any follow up questions or security topics you want us to talk about, please message us. Thanks, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you for listening to the Blue Security Podcast. Please check out the show notes, catch up on episodes you may have missed, and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Find Andy on Twitter at AJawZero and Adam at AJ Brewer. See you at our next episode.